morning viewers uh, it's 5 a.m here i'm exhausted we've been traveling through the night we're on our next location now uh, behind me this beautiful area that you see here is lake eacham now we're actually 820 meters above sea level here and what you see is actually a volcanic crater now today i've essentially come here for nothing more than a history lesson uh, back in the early 70s, a newly described species of rainbow fish was located here. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Uh, was located here, and by 1987, that species had gone the way of the dodo. It went extinct. Now, what happened? Someone thought it was a great idea to release fish into this lake that don't belong here. And this is one reason why we never release uh, our aquarium fish into our waterways. They become pests, they do untold environmental damage and create lots of problems. So in 1987, this newly discovered species was gone, or gone forever, or so we thought. Now, uh, certain members of ANGFA, which is the Australian New Guinea Fishers Association, had actually collected this species earlier on and were maintaining them in captivity. Uh, they did uh, try to release uh, captive bred specimens back into the lake. Uh, some 3,000 fish were released here, but unfortunately the predators took them out again and uh, it was unsuccessful. Cratocephalus stercusmus caram is a fantastic small native fish suitable for the community aquarium. However, it is not readily available and largely ignored by the Australian hobbyist. Personal collecting is the main way to obtain these fish. These juvenile bony brim look stunning with their chrome scales in the sunlight. Adults superficially remind me of the flag-tailed tetras of the Mesoamericas. One of my favourite natives, Amniatabar pericoides, these fish are tough as are all the members of the grunter family. In Australia they fill the role of Central American cichlids minus the egg and fry guarding. One of these cheeky fish thought it would be entertaining to swim up my shorts and take a DNA sample. These would have to be one of the most stunning colour forms of the eastern rainbow fish, Melanotania splendida splendida, I have ever seen. They were not recorded in the lake prior to the 90s and have been translocated from an unknown source, either by human introduction or natural methods such as their adhesive eggs being translocated on the legs of wader birds or waterfowl or perhaps being washed into the lake from a higher elevated body of water during the monsoon season. Either way, 
I would like to know the original source of this stunning colour morph.
Don't blink. A very brief glimpse of the Australian seven-spotted archerfish, Toxodes chattereus. We hoped to capture the species on film underwater, but they were unusually elusive on the day. Now I just want to take you around the outskirts of the lake to see if we can find the rare dusky rat kangaroo. In front of us are two male Australian brush turkeys. They are most likely siblings, hence no territorial aggression. They belong to the megapode family and are related to the peafowl, pheasants and turkeys of the Americas. Look at the size of these curtain fig trees, a member of the ficus family. I am dwarfed by their buttresses. These trees are well over a thousand years old. No dusky rat kangaroo were sighted today. As we departed, we sighted another male brush turkey performing maintenance on his nest mound. Brush turkey eggs are laid in a composting mound of leaf litter and are incubated in much the same manner as crocodile eggs. In future episodes, we get wet. We swim with rainbow fish, blue eyes, and others. Click subscribe and the notification bell to keep up to date. Total Tropicals TV, species profiles, product reviews, collecting in the wild, field trips, retail tours, fish room tours, interviews, unboxings, do-it-yourself tutorials, meet your local clubs and societies, conventions and auctions. Like, share, subscribe.